Hello everybody, welcome back. Today, as the title suggests, I'm going to be doing a basic tutorial on hair. Now, I was almost a little bit hesitant to label this as an anthro tutorial, because it's not strictly an anthro tutorial. In fact, I know quite a few of what I'm doing isn't like showing how to put a muzzle on a character or how to draw a specific species. It's more so just how to draw in general and how to do these kind of basic things that equate to all, all items. So, um... Upon hearing this, you, I may have made a second series just of really generic tutorials, and I can throw these in there as well. But for the time being, I'm only going to have the one series because Lord knows I don't quite have the time for uh, a second series. Uh, anyways, anyways, I'm getting way off track. So, today I'm going to be showing you how to draw hair, but not uh, a specific style of hair. I'm going to be showing you how to put hair on a head which to me seems more important than a specific hairstyle. Now, while hairstyles can be very, very important, especially to kind of determining a uh, character, or at least how they keep themselves, it, it's completely worthless if you don't know how to draw the hair there in the first place. And I suffered from this greatly because a lot of my characters early on had the same two or three styles of hair, and it just kind of... I could, could have practically copy-pasted them between the different characters. And so I've been going through recently, I've been kind of changing them up a little bit while still keeping the initial flair of the reason why I gave them that hair, but uh, I've been changing them up so that it feels better. But I also noticed that I couldn't put the hair down. Like, I couldn't give the characters hair. In fact, one thing I had a huge issue with was where the hair was up here. Like, what, what happened? Did it, did it do this? No, it did not. Uh, so, today what I'm going to be showing you is kind of what I've learned on how to approach this issue. Which, uh, luckily, I don't see it as a huge issue amongst beginning artists. They seem to have bigger issues with other things, but I feel as though this is something important to point out. So, let's get started. Here I have the uh, more advanced line work of a character like Jade, which we're going to be putting down her hair on here. Uh, because it's a bit rather generic hairstyle for girls, and I figure that would be a good a good starting point. Uh, and also, a lot of guys have the same hairstyle. I'm sorry to say, but it's either really messy, really clean, or super messy. <laughs> and you, it's you don't quite get a lot of in betweens there. Uh, luckily, a lot of people still do, but I. Whenever someone just designs a character, I notice that people tend to go for a lot of the same tropes with guys. For girls, you get a lot more variety, a lot more difference. So I'm gonna be showing how to. I'm gonna be showing the girl here because I figured that would probably be better. Now, for those who want to know, this was the basic stuff I put down. Um, I do love drawing in necks, so sorry for that. This is kind of a recent development in me being an artist. But you'll notice I did the same circle with a cross uh, on it that I've shown in past videos in this series. And on top of that I did the more advanced line work and then I got rid of the old stuff. And as always, have your references. The, they are made for a reason. Keep a reference of your characters. I don't care if they're your characters even. I don't care if you're the only person who ever draws these things. Make a reference. It is too easy just to make a reference that you can hand out and that you can use and that you can use yourself so everything stays the same and similar styles and blah, blah, blah. this character is actually incredibly old so unfortunately the reference doesn't do much good because I've changed styles so much and I've actually tried to redesign the character as well so that reference for this character is not up to par and that bugs me because that's one thing I like to keep up with I am rambling too much in this video let's get started on this so let me put down a couple of things just to note. Now, obviously, the hair goes on the top of the head. But what classifies as the top of the head? Well, generally, it'll end right about here with a couple of things ticking down. It'll end right about here with a couple of things ticking up. Actually, that'll bend a little bit more so. And then it'll just drop down because hair likes to drop. It's affected by gravity just as much as anything else. So, where this is, it'll probably go out to here a little bit, and then it'll just kind of be down here. Back here, well, the hair, there's nothing back here to point the hair out in this direction, so it'll more than likely just end up dropping right about here. Now, it'll get a little bit of a flare going out, 
and then obviously it might you know land on the shoulder somewhat so it might do something like that back here this is behind the head so this won't have much going on with it at all now if there's a wind then like just a wind blowing her hair aside then you get all these crazy little flourishes to make it look all pretty and this would be like blowing back in the wind and stuff like that i'm not doing any of that this is a very static pose this is a very static hairstyle it's gonna stay that way now what uh this character has is kind of a weird extra bit to her hair is on and if we pull this up on one side she has kind of a weird dip in her hair and on the other side it's a huge dip Surprisingly, I actually put those in because I didn't know how the hair covered up this half of the head. Again, equate that to me being a rather new artist. This reference is so old, I'm sorry. But I like keeping that along with the character. Plus, it feels like there's a bit of history with it as well. So, again, it'll just kind of drop because it's affected by gravity. Everything is affected by gravity. You know what I'm talking about when I say that. So... This is of no exception. And naturally, it'll kind of cover up the ears. And not only will it cover up the ears, but it'll be going behind the floofs, the side floofs, and I'll probably end up wrapping this around in front. And that's where this kind of weird shape will come from, is because it's coming from over here as well, adding into the overall size of the floof. And then over here, you're it's just going to be a little bit longer. And then that'll incorporate its way in and yada yada. Now, notice how this already looks like hair. Uh, because really hair is just kind of a thing you put on top of your head. So, so long as you have the outline down, you could have something that looks passable in a drawing. Now, do we want something just passable? No, obviously you want to do something that looks a lot better. And for that, you can do a lot more advanced things with it. This, I'm going to be showing you a rather basic system, so I'm going to be showing you a more basic version. Now, this will look a little bit basic in the end, but uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I feel as though that will be perfectly fine. So, let's continue onwards. So here's just kind of a rough sketch of it. Now the rough sketch looks very, very finished. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to make this rather invisible, and we're going to be taking roughly the same color and same system that we did for the sketchwork here and on a different layer because a tutorial it'll be easier for me to show things and b the hair gets really messy when you're drawing it if you can use a different layer for hair and for weird extremities like that and let's get started so we're gonna get started with the brow first now notice i'm using a thinner one because hair demands a lot more precision now this Oh, the sketch back here, notice how this was just a drop-off, but that drop-off is behind the head. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start in front. Now, this ear is pretty much behind the head, and it is excusable for you to just kind of... Let's use a different color so this is more visible. Red will work. Now, it is perfectly excusable for you to kind of just loop this around. That, that's fine, okay? Let it be known, you can do this. Then, you, if you want, you can add a little bit of flare up here, just so it looks more natural. And it'll kind of just like the hair is dropping down. And that makes sense, because the hair is going to be starting right about here, on slightly to the left side of, like, if you feel your head right now, pretty much all your hair start, the flow of it starts roughly to the left side in a line. Okay? That's easy to know. And so long as you can kind of visualize that everything comes out of this area, I look like I just cut a hole in her head, oh no. But so long as you can visualize that all the flows of hair are kind of coming out from here, then you can get a rough idea of what's allowed, what will look good for this. So I'm actually going to keep that line there just so that I can make that point in the end. But this is your hair. Now obviously that's not where all your hair is coming from. You can't just take a pair like a pair of scissors and cut off this area and then all your hair drops. It comes out of everywhere, but the flow of it starts from there. So we have this thing dripping down, and there obviously you can do more with it. I'm not going to for this again. I want to kind of keep this one simple. I'm showing you the basics. And when it comes to the front, it's generally in bad sense to cover the eyes. 
In fact, I always like to avoid covering the eyebrows too, which are generally up here. But she's giving kind of this weird emotion of like, oh, what is that you're talking about? So the eyebrows are raised. So her eyebrows are probably going to get covered up by her hair. And that's natural. And your eyebrows get covered up by your hair if you have rather long hair. And this character has rather long hair, so it's going to be covered up. But in most cases, you may want to try and avoid covering up those things. Plus, you're covering up details about the face. So you're losing information for what? For an aesthetic reason? Try to avoid it. Obviously, there are hairstyles that do that. Like the dr really dramatic over one eye type of thing, yada yada. We, we, we know you're, you're serious about stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this side bit, which drips down kind of far. We're going to kind of slowly work this one up. Now, hair likes to form spikes, but it also will occasionally like just flare out as one single piece. So what I end up doing is I have basically triangles going across the head. And in this character especially, since it has this, but I do these triangles and I have the openings be where the eyes are. Now, they aren't just straight up triangles and I don't just cut them up like so, but what you what you want to do is you want to still have the feeling of those triangles so that the hair looks like it's still there and it's still a part of the face but without covering up any details so like i said it was important so what you end up doing is you kind of form these things coming down and sloping them appropriately of course so that they're still somewhat natural because the head is actually formed a little bit more like this so you could imagine that this hair is probably just resting on the side of this bridge going across your nose. And so that would be a lot, that would be reasonable or something to do, especially since her head is at an angle. Since I'm drawing this kind of like this, with the screen tilted, but this is much closer to the actual version. So like this one here, this one's affected by gravity. So this one will actually kind of dip down and kind of go into that triangle space that I just set up. But that's acceptable because it doesn't cover up anything of importance, namely her eye or her eyebrow. This side, on the other hand, this side could very, very easily get something to cover up her face. So how do we avoid this? Well, we don't want to break up the idea of, of the hair. Like, we don't want to ruin the aesthetic that her hair brings. I'm making her bangs a little bit longer. But we don't want to ruin this aesthetic. So what we can do is we can kind of delay where this side starts. I want the side to start right about here. And the way we can delay this is we can have these openings of the hair starting to flow down. And I'll probably end up bringing this over just because looking at it now that would make a bit more sense. But what we can do is we can have like a single strand sticking out. Unfortunately, her eyebrow has been eaten by her hair, but it's a good it's a reasonable casualty given this. So, but with a single strand, and this single strand, if you're doing line work, will probably just stay black with the lines. But, since it's along with the hair, and since it kind of goes with these spikes, people will immediately understand, oh, that's a single piece of hair. And that's something that, like, when you see it, it will make a lot of sense. And you don't really question it either. So, now that this whole thing is starting, it obviously will just kind of be... Uh, just this really long spike of hair with a couple of things that jumps off of it just because that's more so the aesthetic of this character's hairstyle. Now I'm not going to do this part quite yet. We'll wrap back around to that one. Let's jump over to the top of the head. Now back with this weird gash I put into her forehead. Um, the hair behind it will have a tendency to want to jump up a little bit or at least what I've noticed but it'll leave a little valley for this. And that little valley will kind of show up in the silhouette of it. Not so much in the in the full form of it, but in the silhouette. And that, it, that little valley and the kick-ups it causes next to it is the reason why you see people do hairstyles like that. Because that's kind of like the hair gro growing directly out of this, jumping up for joy because it's grown out of the head. I don't know what the reasoning behind it is, but it's something that's kind of happened in people's styles. So that's one reason you could you could equate for it. Me, if I do anything like that, it's only always just a tiny little bit. 
and normally it's only for uh, rather messy hair is what I like to do it with or if I want to break up the monotony of uh, the head but for this one it'll just kind of flow straight now here's where you have a slight issue so you want the head to look like the head right but if you suddenly just cut off something it looks bad and with this one this space between where these two will form is rather small and actually I don't quite like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to widen that space up a little bit. So by erasing this first line we did, I'm going to make this start lower and immediately go out a little bit, followed by a little flare, and then curve back down. So by doing this, I make a little bit more room here. Now it's more of an aesthetic choice, personally, for this one. But I'm also going to give a little bit of a flourish to the hair on top. Again, I just kind of want to break this area up a little bit. And plus, you know, those flourishes on top of the head are actually kind of interesting to look at. Because the top of the head is just really boring. Now, imagining that this goes along with the side of the head for a little bit, because the ear is a real thing and it is right there, it should end you know, roughly where I put in the sketch line before. And so that pretty much concludes this half of her, of her head when it comes to the line work. Now, let's jump over to here. So, again, taking into account that this thing is a real thing that's sitting here, the hair is going to form outwards like this, and then it'll kind of start dripping down. The hair is dripping down her head. Oh. Actually, that's pretty much it. Like, that, I literally just put that line in. This, this side of the hair, for the most part, feels like all it does is it covers up where the ear connects to the head. Now, there's a million and a half ways you could design this. And this is one reason why hair was such an issue for me for such a long time. I didn't know how to cover this up. And you could see where I thought to do this instead. And that's how this hairstyle came about in the first place. But what I learned is it actually goes behind the floofs and it tap and kind of goes along with the flow of the hair in the back of the head. Uh, kind of like it wraps around a little bit. So what I've adapted to do is to make this kind of just a straight line or you know a curved line going with the head. And then it just incorporates itself into the little spikes left on the back side of the head. Do what makes sense to you in your style with your characters. This, the hair is the most objective part that you could find on a character. Just easily the most objective part. So, if it's that one, I'm leaving that one a little bit more open to interpretation. There's not much more I can say. And when it comes to the back of the head, obviously, we imagine that this is still going back. Whoops. So this goes back, and where it comes out is where this hair will start. And since this is kind of the back end, it'll be a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter. Uh, and I'm going to have it actually on her shoulder just a little bit, or on her neck just a little bit, because I feel as though that would make a little bit more sense of a character just cocking their head to the side. And then it'll wrap back up a little. But when this is colored, this will be colored right up to the edge of her neck. So this will kind of just feel like it flows backwards. Along with this, since this ends here, uh, you will automatically assume that it flows back into the hair. So this will feel like it incorporates itself backwards and uh, kind of connect the ear with the head. There you go. Now, if you have a character with a lot shorter of hair, then it'll actually end right about here, and you'll have to draw on this connection yourself, and that's perfectly fine. Now, when it comes to uh, this, for this character, doo -doo -doo -doo, there you go, that's flat. For this character, what ends up happening is it'll loop up, have a couple of weird spikes jutting off to the side as it kind of incorporates its way into it, and then it'll kind of end right about there. Not a whole lot of craziness to it, but I felt as though that would confuse you at the time compared to like all this other important stuff going on. And really, that's it! 
that's you know the sketch work of how to incorporate it in the hair. Now if I make it the same color, real quick. There you go. And that's the hair. That's the character's hair put onto the character. So I'm kicking some time lapse real quick so I can color and shade it and line work and all that jazz. I'll see you at the end and I'll wrap this up. See you real soon. All right, so welcome back. I uh, know so I'm not quite done with this yet. I thought that I should actually take a stop out of the speed section of this and actually talk a little bit about how to shade the hair. Since this is the general tutorial, I figure that it's a, it's a good time to do so. <clears throat> Now, shading hair is very different from shading other things, namely because the hair is formed out of a bunch of tiny strands. Now you could very easily get by with, say, just this whole area is, is darker and just be done with it. That is something that is okay to do, just keep in mind um, that it's very highly reflective and so, like, uh, Sorry, I flipped on my pencil for no reason. So areas like this would actually be a lot brighter than uh, back here. And then on the very back edge, it'd be bright too because it's reflective. And so it's catching light from everywhere. But uh, since it's formed out of a bunch of tiny little strands, you can kind of go the extra mile for this. And I messed up what I'd done before earlier. So. But you can very easily go the extra mile. And this is a case where going the extra mile would actually mean quite a lot to the form of it and to kind of the idea that this is hair. Sorry, I admit, noticed I missed a couple spots earlier, so I'm putting those in. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is just drawing them in as individual strands. Now, how do you go about doing that? Well, take your shading of choice. For this one, I'm doing a lot more of a softer shading because that's what I've been doing recently. And notice I'm actually just realized I didn't put the whites in her eyes. I thought they looked kind of strange. D don't, just don't pay any attention to me. But you take your shading of choice and you kind of make it thinner than the rest of it. So where normally for, say, this whole section, what I would do is I would take, you know, a very dark shade. I'm just doing rushing this very, very quickly. But I would shade in, say, everything underneath here, then kind of going down, and I would kind of make this whole section darker. And, you know, this side of the face would be doing all this. I'll redo this later to make it look better and yada yada. But that whole thing would be filled in. Wherein with hair, what you would much preferably do is you take a smaller brush and you would kind of slowly build it up. Doing small, small bits. Now what that leaves you with is more so a feeling of brush strokes. And that feeling of brush strokes will give the idea of, hey, this hair is made up of smaller pieces of hair. Instead of you relying entirely on, say, uh, the spikes you put on the front or something. I know I used the word for these things earlier today, and I don't remember them now. But by, instead of just relying on these things to get the idea across that, hey, this is a huge head of hair instead of just a section of blue, because, uh, you know, this character has blue hair. Um, you instead get the idea much more so that it's hair. And this will simply look better for m most styles. Obviously, if it's a, certain, a, a really, really cartoony style, then, you know, you might not want to do something like this. But already, that feels more so like it's real hair instead of before, wherein if it, it was just this whole shade in the area and it kind of became one solid mass. Then keeping in mind things like reflective shading, so the edges would be a lot brighter than the cores. And then this area in the back is in the back, so it needs to be darker to help reflect that. Basically, at this point onwards, it's taking into account basic principles of shading to make the whole thing look nicer. And then if you want, you can kind of define that ridge that I showed you earlier. Just so that everything looks a little bit nicer. Because that is something that you see on people's heads anyways. So I'll kick this back in time lapse and finish this all up. I'll see you at the end. And welcome back. So here you have the final product. Obviously you can see I put a little more effort into the shading. And then I actually added in uh, white highlights. Just 
loosely added them in. I didn't want them to be too severe or too, uh, too eye-grabbing, just kind of a little bit more so to bring out the form of the hair. And then I added in, you know, just shaded the rest of it, but the rest of it isn't what we're really talking about here. So, uh, as a closing statement here, this was a very vague tutorial. And this is a very vague tutorial on purpose, because hair doesn't come in one style. Like, it is just every single person is going to have different haircuts. And if you get a bunch of people with the exact same haircut, then that looks kind of strange, admittedly. So, what I'm going to be doing with this one is, uh, this tutorial is going to be very heavy-handed on send in your ideas. If you have a character that you kind of don't quite know what to do a hairstyle on, then simply put down in the comment section below a couple of uh, different hairstyle ideas that you've had. And also, I barely even talked about different things at all. Like, I didn't say anything about how to do curls, I didn't say anything about how to do super messy hair, I didn't say anything about how to do like, just guys hair in general, although all the same principles still apply. I didn't say anything about short hair, I mean, there's so much that I simply didn't say because I don't have the time to say them. So, pretty much, if you have an idea for a hairstyle, like literally, I'm talking so specific of a hairstyle that you, that you just want to see someone else draw, let me know. Like, that'll be put in the list of tutorials in the future. Also, this uh, video itself doesn't have to be anthro. As I pointed out at the beginning, you could very easily make this as just a normal person's hairstyle. Just get rid of the muzzle, get rid of the side flips, get rid of the ears, and you pretty much have it the same. I mean, hell, it's not like I didn't put the sketch in for that back of the hair anyways. So, these things are very universal of what I've shown. So, apply them. I don't care. <laughs> and if you liked what you've seen here today, then let me know. I don't care if you subscribe or anything. I just want to see what you have to say. And as always, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.